All right, boys, this video is all about this job that we did here in Greenwich where everything was so bad. I hope you guys enjoy it. I spent a lot of time making this video, and I hope you guys really, really love it and subscribe to my channel and watch all the other stuff I make. You guys have been asking for this video, and here it is. Now that we've identified all the rotten areas on the roof, or at least most of them, we can at least start with the walls because we don't want to rip the roof just yet. And then, you know, the sky opens up, starts raining, and then we have a giant flood. So what we're gonna do is just peel back the TPO as much as we can, cut flush with the insulation, all the bad plywood, everything we can get our hands on, and then we're gonna put new plywood. What I'm doing here is I'm adding a 5 8 layer of plywood to the front of the wall, and then I'm adding a 3 quarter inch on top of the wall. And the reason I'm doing the, the front, obviously we need something solid to put a roof to. And the top I want to do just because, the problem is our drip edge only comes to right here, so now I need to carry the drip edge, so I'm putting down some plywood to hold the drip edge over that zip R because I don't want my drip edge to be nailed to foam. off the CPU off the wall to discover all the rot because it's time to fix it but oh my god you can just see how it, it rot everything rotted along this wall as well and they put TPO on top of TPO and they I think what the real leak was actually coming from up here on these screws that actually taped off whenever I came here to do a temporary fix so I think they really messed up with these screws I guess they were leaking through the screws and that was letting the water through the membrane because they didn't waterproof the membrane on top of the parapet wall. Soft, everything's soft. Look at how mushy that is. It's really saturated. Just pulling off this piece of TPO here and then I realized this looks nice and solid. I was like, oh, it's perfect. Then as soon as the TPO gets here, it's like mushrooms and stuff here. Like, look how, oh my God, it's saturated. Look, there's like fungus growing in there. Ooh. Look how bad the seam is. They just glued it, so that was leaking as well. It was right in the corner. There's a lot of water in here, so I think we're gonna have to take up some of this insulation and fix it. See here, look how bad it is. Oh, holy shit, so it must have been leaking pretty bad over here somewhere. Let's get to work. This wasn't even ripped off previously, that's just how easy. We are finally done doing new plywood on all the parapet walls, so it looks pretty good. Now it's time to start the roofing process, the actual install of the roof. We're just starting to remove the cricket that they have here. The cricket is the angled area that's raised to divert the water to the scuppers. Damn. Damn. Okay, okay, let's see, let's see. So you're telling me, if I grab right here, it's so saturated that I could just... Oh, let's go in the house. Sorry. Wow, unbelievable. Damn, okay. CGI is basically uh, a cord of LVL, so this is a laminated veneer lumber right here with an OSB, oh, whatever, with an OSB web in the center. So it's like a 10 inch OSB web with another piece of LVL at the bottom. It's a very strong way of framing a roof, but once it starts rotting, it's very hard to fix. It's like every time I try to make a video, it's like it never really goes to plan. I'm finally finished for today. As as always, things don't go to plan, but what we've gotten done so far is we've removed a lot of the spray foam because it was just really encasing all the eye joists. From what we can see here, everything looks like we had a couple really bad eye joists that are here. So all this has to be replaced all the way to here somewhere. And then we can re-insulate it from the bottom. But 
we're kind of under a time crunch because the weekend is coming and we have to get this done. And we're back for the third day in a row. Here's the next step. It's all about the eye joists that we need to replace now because they're so bad. Our eye joists are all down there. The most important thing for us to do today is get these eye joists replaced. So that's number one. Let's do it. Okay, not too bad. And that's that. That's the damaged eye joist. That's one of them out. Seven more to go. Six more to go, right? The eye joists are in, everything looks good. Everything's been replaced, which that was a process and a half. This one has a little bit of damage, but I'm gonna fix it from the inside and then do that repair on those uh, eye joists that are still damaged. But that's not gonna stop us from putting on the plywood right now because we gotta keep moving because it's gonna rain soon. We're in the home stretch. We're just finishing up the plywood. The framing's all done. I'm just working on my last piece over here. And a little detail I'll show you guys is that this scupper detail. See how high this lip is in here? They ran the outside sheeting of the building too high and they ran the siding too high. So now I gotta get in there with a multi-tool and cut it all down. We're in the home stretch. Isaac's just cleaning up in there. As you can see, it looks a lot better. to rain as you guys can see look at the clouds it's super rainy but that doesn't stop us from working we have to get this done so we've come up with a little bit of a hybrid option for this roof and that's going to be obviously you guys saw us remove this section of the roof over here and then we reinstalled new plywood new eye joists and then we put new iso on top of that now what we're going to do next is peel off the rest of the tpo around here so you can see this correctly. I'm gonna peel it off like so. And if it comes off nice and clean, we're gonna keep the ISO. And if it doesn't, we're gonna replace it. And then we're gonna glue our new TPO onto the old insulation. I know it's not the preferred method, but right now it's Corona time. We're really short on material and we have a ton more roofs to do. Like the one up there. We have to do that one there, that one there. There's one on the other side. There's one over there, balcony roof. And there's one on this side too. So obviously there's a lot of problems here. And then if that wasn't enough, we have the little roof next to us that we've been just looking at for the last couple of weeks. Well, I haven't been actually a couple of weeks. It feels like it was a couple of days. There's also a roof over there. So we have a ton of roofs to do with no material. So what I'm gonna do now is reuse what we can, make sure it's solid, make sure it's 100%. But unfortunately it is what it is. I'm not happy about it, but it's the best option for what we can do. We're just gonna have to move forward. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna screw down the rest of our insulation with these screws. These are three inch plates by Firestone. Actually, no, these are from John Mansfield. Oh, we're mixing materials here. And we got Firestone screws. And we're gonna go ahead and put five screws in every single ISO panel. So we're gonna roll back this TPO because it's not down all the way. It hasn't been glued because it is a peel and stick TPO. So instead of us rolling out glue on the back of it, it's already pre-glued. We just peel the backer, roll it down, we're done. Now that's what the other guys used, but they thought that this peel and stick, so this is the weld seam right here. They had reversed it and thought that the glue was waterproof. 
so they put the weld side to the other side like what do we need this for but that's where the robot comes into play that's how you weld everything together and if you overlap the peel and stick or the the self-adhered roll to itself you have to remove the glue for sure if you don't well you'll have the exact same problem again this has no glue on it that actually has glue because it's so shiny but if you wipe it like this the glue can actually come off but if you do that and then weld it oh you're golden so this actually it's possible to actually remove the glue from the roll it's just a little bit tedious sometimes especially when it's hot out you guys something that I do for every flat roof that we encounter when we're hitting a wall with a lot of water and we don't want it to stand there because when you do a scupper you'll have a lot of buildup around the, the scuppers the drains whatever it doesn't matter you'll have some kind of a place for the water to sit and here's how we avoid that so if you, you look over here I the whole roof is facing down this direction and then what I do is I take the exact same panel or a more aggressive panel and all I do is instead of facing it downwards I face it upwards and I tilt it towards the scupper on that side and the scupper on that side so I just face the panels that direction so that the high point is right here it flows down it flows down and it also flows to that that's that center of the cricket it's called a cricket by the way I just yeah I figured should probably explain that so it flows down this way goes right to the scupper in the scupper and out on both sides of the roof and that and but but sometimes when you have a scupper the pitch that comes to it the water the volume is so much that the the pitch that you have backwards on the cricket oh it's a mouthful doesn't have enough pitch so we have to do double layers so right now i'm just cutting two x panels to face into the cricket and then we're going to put the tpl on and get it waterproof so Let's get to work. No more of this. Now I've explained everything to you guys. You guys can take my... time we were here we got most of the TPO down and we left the walls because it was raining while we were putting down the TPO we would cover it up it would rain for a few minutes we get the water off lay out the TPO lay out the ISO and we keep on going that's how we did it all sorry it's really loud the landscapers are blowing the the, the leaves off the yard out of the yard but the first thing we're gonna do today is we're going to put up a sheet of dens deck to cover up this plywood 
and we're going to put the TPO on top of that. We're going to move small sections at a time because it looks like it might rain. And we don't know what the weather's going to be like, so we're going to peel off our temporary waterproofing here. And from there, we're going to uh, put on the Dens deck and then the TPO. I'd like to show you guys a little close up of exactly what we're doing. So what we're doing here is we're putting up our TPO on the wall. But to do that, we can't go directly to the plywood because these nails, even though the rink shank two and three eighths nails, they have the potential of pushing out over time with, uh, with expansion and contraction and then piercing the TPO membrane on the way out. So we're gonna avoid that by installing this quarter inch dens deck, which is like a sheetrock board with a fiberglass face. And we're installing it with these one and five eight screws with three inch washers while they're insulation plates. And we crease the membrane so we get nice and tight so it looks nice and sexy. And what we do is we work the membrane onto the wall, bend it over the top. What we're doing here is we're bending this, this bottom leg. So that bottom leg is gonna be right here on the roof. So that's what it's, actually, everyone calls it a leg. I don't know why. So this leg is on the roof. It's about six inches. Then we have our run and we have our cap. Now, what he's doing, he's pre-bending our, our leg. And what he's gonna do after that is remove the glue. So, uh, you know, he's just pre-creasing it that way. When we put it up, it's nice and clean. It doesn't have that big wave to it going up. Now that we've creased it, we're gonna take off the glue. And the way we normally do is we just peel back the liner, which is the, uh, the release liner, peel back halfway, and then we just start peeling off the glue. Now, it seems really easy, but it is a little bit of a job, especially when it gets hot out. Thankfully, it is kind of cool out, which just has different problems, but today, this is not the problem. So, today's just taking it off. And the reason we're doing that is because that's gonna be my weld surface to weld back onto the roof. So. When I get over here, that piece is going to sit right here and it's going to weld straight onto the, the, the field of the TPL, the, the field membrane, which is the big piece. the seams I have a little trick to welding up these these seams so this is gonna weld weld all the way down but it's a little too heavy to pull it up on the wall so we have a different robot for that we're gonna weld this one down here and obviously we got that one that one and that one and then we're done for today but that means tomorrow we have to face this cricket area here fix all this because we're holding too much water down here so then I'm gonna do the back wall once that's done and we should be home free. Now I can put on the drip edges and get the hell out of here. Well, we won't really get out of here. We'll just go to the, we should go to the next roof, obviously. I don't know why I just said that. having a lot of 
of water that's being held right here and it actually comes out to here somewhere so the plan for today is we're going to shoot a straight line from that that scupper over there all the way down to this line over here from there all the way down to this scupper and we're just going to make the cricket a lot bigger but we're not going to remove the cricket that we have before because it actually works really well and no water sits there so i'm just going to use that as extra pitch for my next cricket but i'm gonna fix this before we do the flashing because doing it after is really just a nightmare there's a low point here between the two scuppers as if they were going to put drains in before and then opted for scuppers because i guess they're cheaper i don't really know but what i do know is that all we gotta do is make a bigger cricket and that should solve most of our problem if not all of it now we still may have a little bit of standing water right here because we're just shooting a straight line from there to up there somewhere so who knows it really is very hard to know where the water is going to sit but this will give us at least a fighting chance of getting rid of a lot of the water because right now we're having at least an inch sit we got to do is just roof it in put the cover board on the walls finish up the walls and then we are out of here pretty much well i gotta do the scuppers and i gotta do drip edges okay so we're not close to being out of here but we're gonna get it done What I did here is I just went and tacked down all of them in the center. This is a nine inch cover strip. So we have it just tacked in the center. So there's a little weld right there just to keep it from moving around because I don't want it to like move around while I'm welding. So now I'm gonna take the robot, and weld all the seams, and then that'll be the drip edge detail done. And this roof is pretty much done. This is the roof six months after we've done the job. And this is kind of what it looks like. I have not cleaned the roof at all. We have a little bit of debris on the roof and it's a little dirtier than when I installed it. But other than that, it looks exactly like it did the day I finished it. And so this is kind of what it looks like. We have a little bit of standing water here, which is not ideal, but that's the reason we doubled up that Cricut. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Subscribe if you liked it, but I will catch you guys in the next one. Until then, boys, 
over and out.